Wild Trout Trust Research and Conservation uh, Officer Professor Johnny Gray is a stalwart at our annual get-togethers where he not just uh, provides us uh, with fascinating uh, insight into his scientific work but also is, uh, well, he's guaranteed to buy you a few at the bar if you catch my drift. Unusually, this year, rather than uh, get Johnny to take us into his world of science, he's going to approach our world, watercraft, uh, the foundations of which, of course, we all need if we're going to be successful anglers. So he's going to guide us through natural river function from an angler's perspective, giving us insights into where the fish may be found, uh, where the best places are to present your fly, uh, and why it's important uh, to create more of these places for healthy rivers. Five years ago, this section of the river, just broad, shallow, uniform water. Since then, with the Angling Club, we've done quite a lot of work. We've installed a lot of uh, pieces of wood. There's no trees that we can use already growing on the bank here, so we've had to import relatively large pieces of wood, and we've pinned those into the river. And actually, we've pinned in quite a lot down through here, which seemingly aren't doing anything now, Back in the day, they were creating nice diversity of flows. Since then, they've actually caused all of this deposition bar. And you can see how this has been built up. What was now, what was before a very consistently shallow, wide reach has actually been pinched. The deposition bar has forced the river into this very narrow channel over here. Where the foam is accumulating, we've got about a meter, meter 20, centimeters of depth. Obviously we've got a little bit of erosion here but that's natural. I'm not, I'm not at all worried about that. That is a natural process. It's where the gravel comes from. The river over thousands of years will have been back and forth across this floodplain. So with the build-up of this deposition bar, erosion here, we're actually beginning to see meandering of the channel and that's creating diversity of depth and flow which the fish are gonna love. You can actually see some foam lines here. There's character you can aim at as a fly fisherman. You can see distinct flow patterns where the fish are likely to be sitting, nice deep holes. And if we pan all the way back down the river now, the channel, uh, the, the flow of water kicks from one side to the other. So great work from the angling club, great liaison with the landowners, got a good working relationship here. And uh, yeah, I think the fisheries really improved. Some fantastic fish in the air. It is a productive river. If you get the habitat right for them, you'll get the fish growing to some enormous sizes. There's double figure wild brown trout in the, in the air. We get fish five to six pound caught from this particular reach on an annual basis. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty special river. It does need help, but we're doing the best we can for it. And that's, um, that's what we're all about at the Wild Trout Trust. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to, well, some of you came up to the annual get together on the air a couple of years ago. Maybe we'll meet again face to face and walk a different bit of river next year, hopefully. <laughs>